I didn't know that I always wanted to be a writer. I like, I like those stories. People, I was seven years old and I was dying to do it. But I didn't realise you could be. I'm not from a family of writers. Who is? And I never kind of saw it as a job. I've got to bear in mind, this was the 60s and 70s when the amount of behind-the-scenes information was much smaller and you didn't realise that writers existed. But what I realise now is that I was actually writing all the time. I was actually, my head was full of when I was 10 years old, my head was full of Doctor Who stories. When I was 15, 20 years old, my head was full of Doctor Who stories. And, and I used to make up all sorts of adventures in my head of my own shows as well, my own stuff. So without realising it, I was writing all the time. And I'd like to think that all writers are probably doing that. They've all got stories churning away, burning in their heads. I don't know if other writers are like this. Everywhere you go, everywhere you do, you kind of, you're kind of, I'm kind of writing a story with every conversation I have. Imagine if we're in a different way. Imagine if we fell in love. Imagine if we hated each other. I'm always replaying those parallel versions of, of stories with everyone, with everything. If you see a scene on television, I imagine everything gone differently. If you see someone in the street, I start to write dialogue for them. If I'm on a bus, you imagine what if this bus conductor was mad and did this, and would the bus stop? Would it all the time? Actually, all the time. I mean, we're all like that. Everyone spends their life imagining a parallel world. We're all thinking, what should I do for Christmas? Can I bear Christmas with my father again? Should I put my mother in a home? Should I do it? So actually, we've all got stories. We all spend all day thinking about stories. If anything, I'm lucky because I have an awareness that you can turn those into life. You can turn those into a job. You can actually do it for life. But it's what we all do. That's drama. Everyone's dramatizing themselves all day long. For me, the actual sitting and typing about stuff is the last thing I do. I kind of write every episode in a fortnight, um, which is quite quick. I think a lot of people go, wow, that's quick. But I've just learned over the years that, that that might be after a year of thinking about it. A year. And some stuff you've thought about for 10 years. Some stuff you've thought about for 20 years. Some stuff you thought of yesterday. Sometimes you think of a great scene like, that's it, that's it. That's where it all makes sense. As a rough process, describe it as a simple block. I would say a script per month. I can do a script per month, two weeks of that writing, two the first two weeks before that panicking and, and wishing you could start writing and getting on with it. And then that's before the second draft, so the third draft, and so on and so forth. You but will get the advice, which is fine. It's a great advice of putting, of working out your, your script on cards or breaking it breaking the action down into three acts and putting everything in cards and having a room with white walls where you put all your cards up to show you the action. I don't do that. I'm just telling you this so that if you don't like doing that, don't think you have to. Because I don't do it. There's no cards. I just keep everything in my head. I've got the whole episode in my head. In fact, I've got the cards in my head. It's just a different version of having the cards. Um, but if you do use the card system, if you don't like it, um, don't worry, you've, you're allowed to just think about these things. It's good to know the old card system because you get if you get to come into writer's rooms, um, that tends to be the way they break things down. They'll have their whiteboards and they will break episodes down like that. So it's a good system to use, but it's not the be all and end all. I do get stuck partly because I can't skip order in a script. Some people it can, they can write scenes one and two. They can jump to scene 40. They can start writing that. If scene 40 is two brand new people arriving in a car, they can start to write that. I can't do that. I have to write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, in order. I don't believe the next scene exists until the scenes before it exists. So that's where I get stuck. Where shall I go next? And there might be two characters just hovering on the horizon, just dying to appear, but it's not the right place to cut to them. I just don't believe that you cut to them next. Very, very often when, you, when you're stuck and things aren't, the plot isn't moving, is to cut what you've already done. Just, just oh, but those people waiting on page four, they, oh, haven't they arrived and seen one? Bang, get it there, cut, cut all those pages, have them, cut all those scenes, cut them arrived and seen one. Right now it's working. So it involves some big decisions sometimes, some big cuts, and it's a lot more work for yourself. But with hindsight, I can describe it quite easily. At the time, you could, you'll find me walking around Cardiff Bay or somewhere in the wind and the rain, absolutely stuck, feeling like it's the end of the world. But actually, all it is is. You have to trust the fact that you're stuck is telling you something about the script, telling you something profound about the script, and you will get past it somehow. You will. We've all got different voices. You know, if a child walked in here now, I'd talk in a certain voice. If my old gran rose from the grave and walked in here now, I'd talk in a different voice. We all have different voices. From Reg I'm in an interview tone of voice at the moment. If, if, if my lover walked in, I'd talk in a different tone of voice. We all do that. We do that 27 million times a day. So... It's, it's like that for writing, it's just a change of register. It's no different saying I'm writing for children or if I'm writing for a rom-com or if I'm writing a tragedy. It's just a shift in your tone of voice that you do all the time. So there's no, there's no specific rules I don't think I ever learned from children's stuff that um, apply or don't apply to the rest. I think they're the same. I think it's, it's every bit as tough as adult writing. I like to do a comedy. I think I am a funny writer. I would like to apologize now for my cold, by the way, because people think I sound like this all the time. I think I'm a funny writer. I can't stop putting gags in. 
the trouble is, I think the moment I ever think I'm writing comedy, that's when I stop being funny. I think I think there's, I think comedy's I think comedy's terrifying. There's a, there's a very simple reason why I've never sat down to read a sitcom is the fear. It's like facing an iceberg in the water. It's just terrifying. Um, nonetheless, that's, those are the frightening things you should face, and the, the things I love watching. One thing you very often find is that people will be dying for a job in television, but they don't watch it. It's astonishing. And I don't just mean the big posh shows. I think you need to keep your eye on what's happening on Casualty, what's happening on Holby, what's happening on Hollyoaks. If you're a young writer out right there and you're expecting to work with the producers and directors, making your stuff on television, it's only very arrogant of you if you're not watching television. You must. What I do discover is you, your, your previous successes count for nothing when you have a new idea on, 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 a, on a desk. An equal string of failures behind me all of which I love, and all of which I nonetheless respected. Um, there's something good in all of those shows. So um, I only feel the pressure for the next job, to be honest. It's, I don't feel those shows riding on my shoulders. Here I am talking about them, but I'm here just talking about my career. It's like I don't actually walk around all day thinking, how did Bob and Rose do all those years ago? It doesn't enter my head often. You're just looking at the next script, the next idea, the next commissioner, because everyone changes their jobs every five days. So um, someone new is in charge. That's You're kind of looking forwards all the time, which is good. That's a good place to be. The greatest question I ever get asked is, and do you write the dialogue? Do you write the things that people say? Like, what do you think I do? It's like that, That's like your taxi driver's question. But it's also, I think, my sister's. When I, when I met my husband. So they're not the maddest questions, but they're guaranteed to get my back up. Like, yes, I think of everything. I'm like that in a taxi. Go, yes, it's mine. It's all mine. Like that. Like, calm down, calm down, calm down. So the misconception is, is fine. Because actually, if they think it's all... You, you shouldn't watch something being particularly aware of the writer. I think, I think possibly all the other writers and people who are interested in TV in a very niche way are aware of the writers. If you're writing well, you need to work hard on making your characters as clever as you are, if not cleverer. Because it's part of the, the dullest things about writing is that you invent the person. You charge them. You are literally got. They are your puppet. You decide if they get married, if they're on drugs, if they're gay or straight, if they get a divorce, if they're a dragon or whatever. You're in charge of them. So that makes you automatically cleverer than that character. A lot of the time, that seeps out of the writing and makes the character essentially a bit stupid. You get people be acting stupidly or being stupid because they're not in charge of their lives. And it's very noticeable the great characters that I think I do think the harder show to write on television is Doctor Who. And you know, I've been there, obviously, and truly it's hard to write. It's because the Doctor is a billion times cleverer than the writer. He understands art and science and the cosmos and the soul, everything. He gets everything. The danger with Doctor Who is he walks in the door and solves the entire plot in three minutes. But as a writer, you have to spin plates and tap dance and juggle to stop that happening. It makes it very, very hard to write. Let alone the fact that he arrived in a great big machine that's the most powerful object in the universe. It travels in time and, and is invulnerable. It's like he's not in a bad... It's hard to worry for the Doctor when you put it like that. When the lead character starts to be so clever, they're outstripping the writer. That's Jane Tennyson, the prime suspect. I think that's Cracker, that's Luke Barrow, that's Miss Marple. They're cleverer than anyone else in the room. And um, but it doesn't have to be an intellectual cleverness. Del Boy is actually the cleverest person in the room, while being an idiot, while his schemes are doomed to fail. Nonetheless, we would all like to be as inventive as Del Boy, as gregarious as, as Del Boy, as loved as Del Boy. That's a brilliant, brilliant man. I don't mean they're intellectually brilliant. It doesn't have to be Doctor Who or Sherlock. It can be Del Boy. It can even be Rodney. Rodney's so brilliantly Rodney in what he does. So it's keeping your standards up. It's it's not it's not treating your characters as dumb not having them say dumb things and making it really, what you're doing there, what I'm describing is making it hard to write. And it should be hard. You should be chasing after those characters, trying to pin onto their co coattails. It's Basil Fawlty the ultimate man. I mean, that's a genius. He's a genius at being stupid. He's a genius at being trapped in his own little world. But everything he does, it's, you know, try writing another episode of Fawlty Towers. It's, you wouldn't dare do that. You wouldn't approach the genius of that. But that's, that's the skill of the writing that was going on there. So that's where you should be. You should be up there. It's the only place to operate.